So the Adapto speed controller's all in there, guys, all sorted, all nice. I've had a couple of days to like test it out, and it's just absolutely brilliant. It's so smooth, like the, uh, it's just unbelievable. But I've got to run a little errand down to the next town to drop some stuff off to the solicitors for the house move and stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna strap the GoPro on and uh, let's go for a little rip. <laughs> You wouldn't mind if I just left my bike in here a second, just while I pop to the solicitors. <laughs> it's almost. No, that's the other thing. It's really bloody heavy as well. Don't forget that. What's that? A sprint tree. No one's going to know. Ah, uh, thanks, mate. What is it? Self-built thing. Um, basically. I've got the frame got from in China. There. Yeah. <laughs> There's a load of batteries in there. Oh yeah? But basically. What, double A's? <laughs> that'd be funny, wouldn't it? Dewar so. Mm. Yeah, it takes up about that much of it. And then there's like a speed controller in there and then um, that's, that's, the, the that's the motor on the back, mm. yeah. So you, you can pedal it, but it does weigh quite a lot. Twist grip as well. Yeah. Oh, right. Twist grip as well. And you've got this this um, gizmo here which it basically controls the whole thing, so when it fires up, and it gives you like, like your range, your speed, you've got mm -hmm. different speed profiles on there as well. I mean, it's incredibly advanced. I've only just put this on here. Mm -hmm. um, but I come from, I just come from Halstead. Okay. Um, on the road? Yeah, well, yeah. So, some back roads, some, you know, across the green lanes and stuff like that. But um, I'm just testing it out as sort of how viable is it to use as. You know, instead What's of a car. Range? What's the range? Uh, the range is about 70 to 80 miles at the moment. Miles? Yeah. If you pedal it, probably be more. You is go that the only wheel size? Is it 26? No. Funny, everyone says that. It's actually, they're actually 19 inch rims. Um, 19 inch motorcycle rims, but you've got a, um, like a motorcycle tyre on it, so it comes to about 24 inch overall. Mm. Anyway, let's pop into yeah, no the solicitors and sort it out. It goes off right away, it goes right through the middle of the two fields, drops down round, round a little. Thanks, mate. See ya. Right, guys, before I go any further, because I'm going to rip down that lane in a minute, um, I just want to show you the, um, the Adapto controller, just give you like a little brief overview of it. Um, firstly I'll say I've got this domino throttle on here um, which is just amazing those of you wondering about the domino throttle just get it because it is just absolutely brilliant like it's so rock solid and it's really really smooth like it's got a really good spring on it as well um, apologies about my voice because I've obviously got the crash helmet on um, and it's it's got yeah it's got a really good spring on it um, so that it won't just like launch the bike off and everything else um, and then on this side I've got a regen brake now this is really cool because this allows you to like, progressively add braking um, via regen on the other setup on the other setup I basically just add like a switch I don't know if you remember it was just down here and I just used to push that to turn it on I never used to do it because um, you know it's just a, it's just a pain really but this is quite nice to get used to because you can just feather on a bit of brake um, you know and it slows the bike down you can set it to quite high in the settings here so that the back wheel just you know adds a little bit of resistance in it not enough to lock it up but just to add braking it also saves the rear pads um, as well so you know combined with this brake here the rear brake takes a little bit of getting used to but it's it's absolutely brilliant um, so yeah onto the controller then uh, for those of you who haven't seen one of these loads of people have got them now uh, nowhere near the first but um, one thing I really like about it is this little range indication here um, and it's basically gives you it in miles which before you just kind of had amp hours which is highly highly reliable because you know you can't get better than that but it's just a bit inconvenient because you don't really know you know if you're traveling at a certain speed you don't know how to calculate how many miles on the fly and this basically does this for you so I've just been cruising about and it's, it's on about 66 miles here and it's showing them on 80% battery and I've just done 
um, let me see here I've just done 11 miles so that's pretty good going so the stat screen's really good um, you know the setup of this controller is just absolutely amazing um, because you can just basically go into the controller and you can change absolutely everything power mode profiles so setting it up has just been really really easy um, and the other thing I will say is that where I had this Avaton set on crazy settings and um, to the point where it was actually dangerous um, you know it, it's one of these things you can set all these controllers up how you want you know if you want crazy acceleration to just basically pop a wheelie as soon as you pull back the throttle obviously for off-road use only um, but you know if you want that you can do it but you know for them from a safety aspect what I like about this the way this is set up by default um, the acceleration is very progressive it's very slow so if you pin the throttle it won't just like launch off into you know into the distance it will actually wind up slowly um, and I think that's just a much better that's a much better solution um, than having all your power available on one single go but you can do that on this controller if you actually want it to just you know be absolutely brutal it will so yeah the other thing I noticed is it's just very very smooth like the motor um, it picks up very very smoothly it's the sabaton was a little rougher um, and then you can even fine tune um, this even more I haven't touched those settings yet because there's some advanced settings about how to tune the motor um, which Dr Bass from Endless Sphere Forum has actually done a very very good video on um, so I will be looking at that um, shortly just to try and tune the motor a little bit but to be honest you know right now it isn't too bad it's actually it's very very smooth it seems quite efficient um, I haven't checked the temperature after my little little short distance run it's just completely cold the other thing I'll say about the you might notice the temperature um, gauge here it's saying 32 degrees and that's completely wrong um, so I've hooked up the temperature gauge of my motor but it's um, yeah it's, it's not working so I think you do get a motor sensor with you do get a temperature sensor with the actual adapto controller kit um, but you've got to obviously take the motor part to put it in so at some point when I do a motor service I'll probably um, I'll probably just stick that in there I've got some broken hall wires where I had an accident with um, these these little nuts where they just unscrewed themselves and um, you know went through the you can't really see the wire in there but it basically cut through the motor wire and then sheared a couple of um, hall, hall wires um, but the good thing about this controller is if that see when that happened I was stranded so I, I had to pedal home um, which is not ideal on, on a bike like this um, but on this controller what would happen is if the horse if the horse sensors fail you can put it into sensorless mode and it will get you home which is just so amazing because that's another thing you haven't got to worry about um, while you're while you're out and about so yeah that's really good obviously I think it will run really rough you know it won't be running as smooth as it's going to be when it's got the hall sensors um, but you know it, it's probably the acceleration that would be be rough once it gets going it will know um, from the EMF forces and stuff where the actual motor position is so it can work it out but um, yeah so that's a little brief overview I'm still going through the settings on this there's just tons and tons of settings um, to play around with so I love stuff like this because it just it keeps you occupied um, and you can try new things on the fly without getting a laptop out and, and programming it that's what I really like so yeah anyway I'm gonna go for this rip down this little green lane I did actually come this way before but um, the GoPro was, wasn't recording for some reason <laughs>
So back from the errands, got the stuff from the solicitors and um, back in the office now. The way the bike can be used as like a complete car replacement or just like, well, it's like a moped really. Um, it's just unbelievable. It's so good because Sarah took the car today and she's gone to the gym and I was just like, well, I'm just gonna, I'll just take the bike to do the other things I needed to do. So just like the fact that you can do that is just, it's just brilliant. Because the thing about around here is it's just so hilly, like the terrain is crazy. I mean, it's great if you want to kind of like, you know, get yourself really fit and be a really fit cyclist. But I've not really got any interest in doing that because um, I go to the gym, I do, you know, other, other things to sort of keep myself fit. So using the bike to get from A to B reliably, safely and efficiently is actually sort of fast becoming my main aim with like this kind of e-bike. And the whole electric vehicle thing is just more and more becoming a big kind of part of my life. So yeah, I'm really, really, I'm really liking it. And that, that Adapto speed controller is just another level. Like it has just transformed that. So if you're, if you're running like Chinese speed controllers and stuff like that, and you're playing around with, with all, all of that, if you want to turn your bike into a, an amazing electric vehicle that is reliable and has, you know, a lot of kind of features that you would find on like a, a car, like an electric car, um, yeah, you need to get one of these Adapto controllers. Wear my bike gloves on the skateboard now. Also gone back to this controller now, it's so much more reliable than the other one. Feels good with all the electric stuff's working again. Back at home, just waiting for Sarah to um, get back from the gym. So I wanted to show you this. So this is a bit of an experiment, but it's it's like um, kind of like a portable charging solution for the e-bike. I wanted to test out the Adapto coil. Um, what this allows you to do is to use any voltage from about 24 volts to charge up any battery of any voltage, really. I, th I think there might be an upper limit of like 90 volts or something. But effectively, it allows you to use like a small charger like this. This is like a 13S charger, which I've got for one of my other projects, it was just for, for, the, for another battery. Um, but rather than have like a different charger for every different battery that you've got, which I kind of ended up with, um, it means you can just use like a low, small low power, really small, really light, that would fit in a backpack. And it allows you to charge the e-bike um, at about two or three amps, which isn't really a lot, but actually it's not bad. If you, if you wanted to do a, a kind of slow charge, it's pretty good. So the way it works is, Obviously your normal charger just plugs into the wall like that and then the output of that goes into this little, um, I think this is a bunch of capacitors in here, but it's part of part of what is called a boost converter um, and then there's a coil here and then this end is the end that charges the e-bike. So that would just plug straight into the, to the side of the bike. Um, now you have to do a bit of fiddling around because on the actual bike itself, normally you're charging into the charge wires of the battery. Um, on an, in this case, you're actually charging through the controller. It's weird. It's kind of it goes through one of the phase wires of the motor, so you have to, um, you know, break break a phase wire and just you know either put a connector in or, you know, just solder it really really well. This is what I've done. Um, and then the other negative goes into another part of the speed controller. Like there's another negative. There's like two negatives on the. Um, on the speed control then. Anyway, it goes through that, and then that allows the Adapto speed controller to actually um, adjust the charge voltages and everything else. Now, the bonus of that is you get to see all the charge statistics on the screen of the Adapto, and it tells you everything about what's happening with the charge, which is just absolutely awesome. So I'm gonna show you that now. So I've got my charger plugged in. You have to excuse I'm doing this half in the garden and half in the house because um, these wires don't really reach. So first thing you have to do is turn the bike on, so the controller's on. Then you get your charge wire, which I've got here, and you just plug that into the bike, like that. And then on the screen straight away, it says charge. And if you push this button here to the left, it will show you your charge sort of statistics. And if you can see that, well, but basically um, you're charging at 2.5 amps, the supply voltage, supply current, so is 3.5 amps. Um, the voltage of the battery is 76 odd, 76.1. And then that voltage there, 53.7, well, it's gone up and down, but 
that voltage there is um, is actually the charger voltage. So you can see the charger voltage is a lot lower than the um, battery voltage, and that then means you can use it to charge um, a battery with a high voltage because it's actually going through this coil and this boost converter. It's extremely clever. Um, it's very simple, but it's a very good idea. I mean, I was really impressed by this. It's got charging CC mode, so constant current mode. So, and you can see to full five hours, six minutes. Now, it's, it would say that because we're charging at such a low rate, 2.5 amps, um, and the battery, I think, is, I don't know how discharged it was, but it's, it's down to 76 odd volts, so 62% of the battery. It's gonna take a while to do that. But I'm not really bothered about that because I'm not going out on it um, in the near future, so um, that can just sit there and, and charge. Yeah, that charger is actually pretty noisy. <laughs> I should just put it um, put it in the trailer, really. Anyway, um, yeah, so that, for those of you guys that kind of know about batteries and stuff like this, you might be wondering what I'm doing about um, a BMS. Now, Adapto make their own BMS, uh, but I haven't actually got that yet. That's actually on its way here. Um, and Insat, the company that makes the battery, that made the battery for me, um, said they'd be able to install the, the BMS um, for me. I could do it myself, but the thing with Insat is they've supplied this battery and it's all nicely um, packaged up and everything else um, and obviously it's under warranty so um, they will basically install the BMS for me it's, it's the best thing to do and they're professional they know you know they know how to do it. they do this stuff all the time so that's going to happen meanwhile I'm actually charging this directly but it isn't actually going to be going through a BMS because it's going through the main discharge wires of my battery um, my main discharge wires and my battery are connected directly to the battery. There's no nothing in between apart from like a, a circuit breaker um, for you know really high current. Um, so yeah, there's an issue there where potentially so the BMS isn't isn't going to cut off the voltage at the high level. The good thing about the um, the Adapto charge control is you can set a maximum voltage. So if you set a maximum voltage to you know less than the fully charged voltage of your battery you've got less chance of anything anything bad happening and at this low current as well I'm going to be keeping an eye on it and I don't think there's going to be too many issues but um, and the BMS as well see this is one thing I was I was kind of wondering I don't know if anyone knows the answer to this question um, but the BMS in the battery itself um, is I believe kind of programmed so that when it gets to the top end of the charge each cell is like 4.1 or above 4.1 or something like that if there's any disparity between the cells it will actually bleed off some voltage and get them all down to the lowest one in the pack but I don't know if that happens when you're charging through the main leads or whether it only happens if you're charging through the discharge the charge leads through the through the BMS I've always thought the balancers would just sit there 24 7 and just monitor things um, and if things went out of balance they would adjust it there and then because you hear all these stories about people um, that have like a BMS that's blown and overnight um, their battery just discharges to nothing so so guys I don't know if anyone knows the answer to this question um, that would be quite interesting but as it turns out I'm not going to be doing this for much longer anyway I'm, I'm only going to be top up charging um, for the next few days until I get the Adapto BMS it's going to be really cool because you can see all the individual voltages of each cell on the screen of the Adapto and then you can actually get it to start balancing from there as well. So yeah, it's going to be really, really cool that. One more thing as well is the maximum charge rate you can actually charge on through this coil, this particular one that I've got, is 30 amps. So that is just crazy. That means that you could charge this battery, potentially, my battery, in an hour. And I never run it flat anyway, so, so it looks like you potentially be able to just charge this battery up in like 15 minutes 15 20 minutes if you just if you've forgotten to charge it and you're going out in half an hour yeah whack it on charge and it'll be it'll be done in not 15 20 minutes anyway guys apologies if like this just meant absolutely nothing to you guys um <laughs> i'm getting carried away with the e-bike and all the other stuff to do with it um so if you've kind of come to this channel um, because you've been interested in the drone videos or the other things i've been doing yeah just hold fire because i'm going to be doing more stuff on, on all of that but um my little terrors are going crazy. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, you're bored, aren't you? 
So guys, that just about concludes today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks for all the support as always, like the comments and emails and stuff like that. I try to answer every single one, but understand it's just impossible because it's just, now the channel's getting bigger, it's getting harder and harder and harder. But anyway, I will catch you later. Bye.